kneel down and adore him with shepherds today and join in the song of the heavenly host.
You've been listening and watching St. John's Lutheran Mixed Choir sing a variety of their favorite Christmas carols and hymns. We hope you enjoyed it and that it enhances your Christmas celebration. I'm Pastor Stephen Aulis. I'm the pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church. We're located on the corner of Miller Street and Doran Street. I'd like to read for you from the Gospel of Luke, the Christmas Gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. There was a pastor by the name of Al Lindgren who was fishing with his 12-year-old son and the fish weren't biting so well that day. They had a little chance to talk. And the young man asked his father, Dad, Dad, he asked, what was the hardest thing that God ever had to do? And the father was kind of taken aback by that question. And he said, I don't, I don't really know, son. And the boy said, gee, Dad, for a pastor, you really don't know much about God, do you? And then the boy went on to answer his own question. The boy said, when I was in science class, he said, we, we studied the complexities of creation. And he said, I, I thought at that point, maybe the hardest thing that God ever had to do was to create the world with all its intricacies. And then he said, after a while, I got thinking, from confirmation class and from Sunday school, we were talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And I thought, maybe the hardest thing God had to do was to, to raise Jesus from the dead. But after that, he said, after talking with some of my friends, and he said, after seeing how people in the world respond to God, he said, I concluded that the hardest thing that God had to do was to get people to know who he was and how much he loved them. And of course, 
That is why God sent Jesus to this fallen world, so we could get to know who God is and how much God loves us. And of course, that little baby in Bethlehem didn't stay a baby. He grew up to be a man, a man who lived the perfect life, who showed us what the kingdom of God is by, by healing and by, by showing compassion to all who were in need. And then that Savior was willing to give his life on the cross, uh, the, the greatest act of love ever, in order to redeem and save us from our sins. And because of his redeeming love, because of his death and resurrection, we have the assurance that that love of God which we experience here and now is a love we can experience eternally. I hope that you have a blessed Christmas and that the Savior Jesus Christ is central in your celebration.